Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. We're here to talk to you for a second about the temporary COVID aware family time plan. This plan has been developed to help guide parents, caregivers, visit providers, caseworkers, legal partners in developing a plan that is responsive to the increasing levels of COVID disease that we're seeing in our area. We've been living in a pandemic for nine months and it's been hard. We've had to tackle challenges we've never imagined like virtual schooling and not being able to see each other in person. Many of us feel stretched thin and on edge, including parents and caregivers. We acknowledge that family time has been anything but normal during the pandemic. Everyone has been forced to adjust and we're all tired. Even though we are all done, so very, very done with the pandemic, it isn't over. We're seeing record levels of COVID-19 disease in our state. This is forcing us to adjust some family time plans again. This isn't what any of us want, but it's important for us all to remember we're all in this together. Caregivers, I'm acknowledging that this is going to put more on your plate. We're asking you to do things that are going to increase your workload, like extra virtual visits, transporting the visits, that kind of thing. But we're all going to work together to try and reduce the risk and remember that this is temporary in nature. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dorothy Gorder. I'm the coordinator of Pierce County Parents for Parents program. I'm a parent and a caregiver. Um, in March, when COVID went crazy, um, a lot of our family time visits went to virtual visits, and it was very difficult for people to transition. Um, and then once we started to have the COVID cases reduced, we transitioned back into uh, in-person visits. But now as we are having a major spike in cases, we are thinking about um, reduction in transmission and making sure that all of us here in Washington state are staying safe. So a group of folks like uh, Katie had said, came together and um, put together some guidelines and some, some suggestions so that we don't have to completely transition back to all virtual visits. Um, I'm coming here today to share a few different examples of how uh, virtual visits can be a positive. Um, I have a little girl. She was two and a half when she came to me. Her dad was in um, treatment. And in order for them to maintain their bond and their relationship, we did uh, virtual visits. And not only was it exciting for the little girl, but also her dad. Um, here he was getting clean and sober really was getting to know his daughter all over again and uh, enjoy the excitement of being able to see her on on screen and her to be able to see him. Um, so now it's been about six months and he's in a position where he comes and he takes her um, for in person visits, but in between he still does the video visits and that's now something that's really exciting and they look forward to that. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic in March. I had made a suggestion to a new mom. She had a little baby, probably four or six months old, uh, about looking into the video camera because um, science says that if that a young baby identifies and connects through your eyes. And so I'd shared that tip with her. So when she did her virtual visit with her, her little baby, um, she looked into the, to the camera and the baby looked at her eyes and then uh, she reported back to me that after just a couple minutes of doing that, her baby was like cooing and cawing and connecting with her, uh, making funny sounds where she hadn't experienced that connection prior to doing that with her eyes. So um, this is a great opportunity to be creative on having virtual visits with your children, young and old. Um, this is also a great opportunity for caregivers and birth parents to be able to work on a relationship. Um, both, both parties are interested in the well-being and, and what's best for children. And um, it's it's devastating when children then transition back home, you know, the relationships are reduced and um, there's that re-trauma that occurs. So if we could start now over virtual um, to make those connections where, um, Caregivers are being vulnerable, allowing a birth parent to see their home during a virtual visit. 
um, and vice versa, you know, caregivers are able to see where biological parents are having, or, you know, what's their background like? Um, they can start to reduce those, those fears and you guys can make connections uh, so that when the child has returned home, you can then have a relationship with um, that, the foster family or the caregivers. Um, we call it a, uh, an icebreaker so it hasn't really launched yet but this is a great opportunity to get that started uh, so i really hope that you'll take advantage of this opportunity to be able to build relationships and to stay connected with your children um, and also you can have more frequent visits this way as well once you guys have started to build that relationship and the trust you know uh, people may say yeah let, let's have you call uh, five times a week for 10 minutes um, that would mean that you'll be able to see your child more often and children don't really care so much about how long they see you. Um, they, it's how often do they see you that's really important. So even if you only get to see your child virtually for five or 10 minutes, five times a week, that's way better than two visits for three hours in a week. Uh, I can say that that's the case, especially with the little ones that I care for in my home. They like to see regular visits and interactions. So um, please take a serious look at, at these suggestions and recommendations um, and see what could but work best for you. Uh, be willing, be willing to compromise. Um, thank you. Hi, my name is Sean Powell and I am the King County Parents for Parents Program Coordinator. And um, I'm just here today to help encourage everyone to use these guidance tools. Um, and really, you know, as a parent to being able to uh, propose this as an opportunity um, in this time when everything is a challenge and everyone is struggling, um, parents might be reluctant and feel like everything is a hurdle for them. And being able to uh, demonstrate skills of adaptability and adjusting in a healthy, uh, positive way in circumstances and duress the court is going to uh, look at that as a success. And so using this time and being able to demonstrate that you can build on the relationships with caregivers, build on the relationship and rapport with social workers and all the professionals that it takes to put visits together, whether they're in person or virtually or telephonically um, and be creative with that team of people really demonstrates um, some high level parenting uh, skills to the court. It helps to remember that we are making these sacrifices for a short time. We will get through this, but right now we need to reduce the opportunity to transmit the virus in family time visits by revisiting every case and we need to keep families connected and children supported. The recently released temporary COVID aware family time guidance will guide parents, caregivers, visit providers, caseworkers, legal partners in doing this. As a parent, I think that I need to hear praise for how flexible I've been in court. I need the court to recognize that it is tough and they know that it's awkward to do this. But And the caregivers, if they're in court too, they need to hear that also because caregivers need uh, praise as well. But I think for parents, like for me to keep doing it and if I'm revisiting it every three months and they're continuing to tell me that I have to stay virtual, for me to buy into that and continue pushing through, I'm gonna need some recognition. Yep. Or to, to say, yes, look what everything you've done and, and, and look at how flexible and how much, you know, you've built your relationships and, and, you know, look at the difference, you know, between your relationship with your kids now and then, or some type of um, celebration or honoring or just, just acknowledgement, really. What caregivers need to hear is we recognize that you're having more added to your plate when your plate's like overflowing, heaping, and things are already falling off but that you guys are going above and beyond to keep those connections for kids and yeah. keep those parents connected. And it's awkward. You're inviting someone into your house. You're making time in a really full day for a parent to see their child. And so I think Sean hit the nail on the head. People need to be recognized that thank you for flexing. 